As you can probably tell from this picture, I was assigned the tropical rainforest biome. So let's start off with the abiotic factors. The temperature is on average around 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 to 30 degrees Celsius all year round, so it's always very warm. The rainforest, of course, has the largest amount of rainfall out of every biome, about 50 to 260 inches per year. Because of the heavy rainfall, the soil is actually thin and poor quality, contrary to what we might think otherwise. A lot of the abiotic factors of tropical rainforests have to do with their location, and you'll find them between 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south in terms of latitude, so all very close to the equator. Rainforests cover about 6% of Earth's surface, and they're found in every continent except Europe and Antarctica. Some of the most well-known and impressive rainforests include the Amazon, the Congo, the Madagascar lowlands, the Borneo lowlands, and the Queensland rainforests. The first thing you need to know about the biotic community of a tropical rainforest is that there are four layers. The uppermost layer is the emergent layer, which has trees that are 100 to 240 feet tall with umbrella-shaped canopies. Here you'll find uh, birds like toucans um, and macaws and all sorts of butterflies. The canopy layer is home to the most variety of animals um, like monkeys, sloths, and frogs um, with trees that are 60 to 130 feet tall. The understory is made up of the trunks of canopy trees, shrubs, plants, and small trees. It's constantly shady and has high humidity. Uh, this layer includes animals like lizards, um, beetles, and bats. The forest floor is completely shaded and um, has very few uh, br bushes or herbs can grow there. Still, there are animals like jaguars, gorillas, and scorpions. The tropical rainforest also contains the most biodiversity out of any biome or habitat, so the food webs can get pretty messy. Here's an example of one. So for example, in this food web, a banana will be consumed by a monkey, which is then preyed upon by a jaguar. Uh, much of the wildlife in a tropical rainforest has developed adaptations in order to best survive in the environment. For example, upper canopy leaves are dark green, small, and leathery um, in order to reduce water loss in the strong sunlight. On the other hand, understory leaves are very large to absorb as much sunlight as possible. Tree roots have also adapted, um, with buttress and stilt roots, for extra support in the shallow, wet soil. There are a lot of different community interactions in the tropical rainforest. An example of a symbiotic relationship is the parasitism of the strangler fig. The strangler fig kills the tree by stealing sunlight and root space after enveloping it. An example of interspecies competition is with the trees of a rainforest. Trees compete heavily for sunlight. As a result, new trees have little chance to grow. Co-evolution is also very important to the community. For instance, many fruit-eating birds like toucans co-evolve with the plants uh, whose fruits they eat, like guavas. Many characteristics of fruit plants have evolved to facilitate seed dispersal, and in response, the behavior and diets of birds have also changed. A specialized niche is created by the close proximity of trees in the understory, which is home to arboreal animals like uh, the uh, Drosophila birchii. On the other spectrum, a generalized niche is created by the large trees of any one species, since they aren't usually close neighbors. 
Therefore, organisms like the southern cassowary must by necessity have a large range. Tropical rainforests are very useful to humans. An essential example of this is oxygen. Tropical rainforests produce 40% of Earth's oxygen, which we need to breathe and survive. In addition, one-fourth of all the medicines we use um, come from rainforest plants. Carrere is used as an anesthetic during surgery. Quinine is used to treat malaria. Humans, unfortunately, have a very negative impact on tropical rainforests, and one of these impacts is just deforestation. Um, deforestation is caused by people logging for firewood, um, charcoal, and many other reasons. Uh, one good solution to deforestation is sustainable forestry, which is already done by many corporations. Um, a sustainable forest is carefully managed so that as trees are felled, they are replaced with seedlings that will eventually grow into mature trees. If we cannot stop deforestation, then many rainforests will be destroyed, which leads to erosion, decrease in biodiversity, and the reasons we need them in the first place will put us in direct danger. Um, I want to thank all the numerous resources I've used for this presentation. Um, which are all listed here. And thank you all for watching.